Welcome back. Um, unfortunately, uh, Zoom crashed in the middle of uh, the last lesson, so the video kind of broke uh, in a poor way at the end of the last part. So um, I'm going to back up just a little bit on this um, one example we were doing here in section 2.5. So in this uh, question, we had had an equation, we'd had 3y plus 5 over 6 plus 1 equaling 4y plus 3 over 3. And so the LCM of 6 and 3 is going to be 6, We're multiplying both sides uh, by 6. So then on the left side, 6 times 3y plus 5 over 6 just gives the 3y plus 5. 6 times 1 gives 6. On the right side, we have 6 uh, times 4y plus 3 over 3. Uh, the 6 divided by 3 just gives 2, so we'll have 2 times 4y plus 3. And now the fractions are gone. We'll combine like terms, having 3y plus 11 equaling 8y plus 6. Okay, this time I think I'll collect the variables on the left, just because I haven't done that in a while. So let's subtract 8y from both sides. This will give us negative 5y plus 11 equaling 6. Then subtracting 11 from both sides will give us negative 5y equals negative 5. So that makes y one after all that. Okay, so uh, continuing onward, uh, that takes care of our look at uh, how it is with equations with fractions in it. Uh, the last piece has to do with what do you do if there are decimals in it? And it turns out that what we do when there's decimals is really similar to what we do as fractions, because remember that fra decimals are another way of viewing a fraction. Uh, for example, 0 0.3 is the same as 3 tenths. Okay, let's try that again. So 0.169 is 169 one thousandths. So um, as you know, we can multiply both sides of an equation by the LCM of the uh, denominators, and that clears the fractions out. We can see that that would... Uh, do the same thing here, even if there are decimals involved. We're going to try that on this one by rewriting the equation in terms of fractions. Here, 0.02x plus 0.3 equals 4. If I rewrite this as fractions, we would have 2 one hundredths times x plus 3 tenths, and that's equal to 4. Here, the LCM of 110 is going to be 100. So we're going to multiply both sides by 100. That will be multiplied by 200x and 3 tenths. The right side will be 4 times 100 also. Okay, 2 uh, 100 times 100 just gives 2, 2x there. And then 100 times 3 tenths is going to be 30. Right side's 400. Taking away 30, 2x is equal to 170. And that's going to be uh, 90. 85, sorry, 85, okay. All right, so what we did there, um, we're not going to, in reality, turn this into fractions every time. I just wanted to illustrate how this goes. Uh, we multiplied um, both sides by 100 based on the fact that there were denominators of 10 and 100. So what you do is you look here and say, okay, what is the at biggest power of 10 you see in the denominator? And that's 100. So we would multiply both sides by 100. In terms of decimals, going back to the original equation, uh, there's two decimals in the equation, 0 0.02 and 0.3. Which one has more digits behind the decimal point? The 0 0.02 does. It has two digits behind the decimal point. We're going to move the decimal point over two places to the right. Moving it two places to the right, that is the same as multiplying by 100 which we did just a minute ago. So moving the decimal point over in all of the numbers, um, all of the coefficients will give us 2x, 30, sorry, there should be a plus sign in here. 2x plus 30 equals 400. So what has happened here is I've moved the decimal point over two places to the right, um, based on the fact that there were two digits behind the decimal point in 0.02. And then this finishes the exact same way as we did. Um, that should be 370 back here. Sorry, I was not paying attention earlier. And so that's 185. So I apologize. That, I apologize. That should be better. 
That's 370, not 170. And 185. All right, sorry about that. So um, try that again. So in this next example, we have um, three decimals, four decimals actually. There's two digits by the decimal in the first one, two in the second, two in the third, and only one in the fourth. So the greatest number of digits you see behind the decimal point is two. So we're going to multiply both sides by a hundred. And I like to show this, but um, you may not need to in order to get this done, but I like to show it. So uh, we're multiplying both sides by a hundred. Okay, some people don't like to show this step. So this moves the decimal point over two places to the right, giving us four. On the right side, we'll have 35x minus uh, 240. Okay, so we've moved the decimal point over two places. So uh, from here, it should be hopefully pretty routine. I'm going to subtract um, 14x from both sides. So that we'll just have variables be on the right. This will give us just 21x's on the right. Add 240 to both sides. Okay, and then I'm going to need to divide by 21. And that gives 12, x is 12. Okay, all right, let's try one more example. So on this one, taking a look at the uh, numbers um, or digits behind the decimal point, in the first number, we have 0.25, so two digits. In the 0.05, we have two digits. In the last one, two digits. So we're going to move over the decimal point two places in each of those coefficients. So we will have 25n plus 5n plus 5s. That's equal to 295. It's important to note that you're not going to move over the decimal point on the numbers inside the parentheses here because we've uh, achieved what we needed to achieve by uh, moving it over on the 0 0.05. Okay, so from here, we'll uh, distribute to remove parentheses and then uh, combine like terms. And then we should subtract uh, 25 from both sides. Okay, so 30n is 270, so that n is gonna be nine after all that. Okay, all right, so that takes us to the end of this section uh, on working with decimals and uh, fractions. We saw that essentially we multiply both sides by the LCM of the denominators when it's fractions, and we move the decimal point over by a number of decimal places equal to the maximum number of digits behind the decimal point uh, in the coefficients, uh, in the case where the equation has decimals in it. So like I said, that takes us to the end of this section. Let me know if you have any questions, and have a great day.